in our new church year. It is Advent, and we are saying goodbye to the Gospel text of Luke and saying hello to Matthew at this time. So we will be reading from the Gospel of Matthew this year. So for our bell ringing to call us to worship, and if you have a bell at home, you might want to jingle it so that other people in your household will join you. And hopefully you have a candle in your worship space. And I just want to remind everybody, we are a Kaya Church, a Come As You Are Church. And everybody is welcome, and everybody can participate in any way, shape, or form that they would like to. That includes singing, or reading, or participating, or doing skits, or anything. If a group of you want to come in, hey, you are more than welcome to do that. We are open to moving forward and changing ways at this time of year. So remember, all are welcome. And now, at this time, we talked about hope in our video and we light the first candle on our Advent Some of you may have participated last year when we made Advent wreaths. If you did, I hope you have your own. It's your family wreath that is becoming tradition. And if you don't, it would be a good time to, together, make an Advent wreath that resembles who you are, what your belief system is, and what is important to you at this time of year. So together, let us pray. Slide number five. God of hope, awaken our hearts to you this Advent season and fill our hearts with hopeful anticipation of your coming so that when Jesus arrives, we are ready to receive him in our hearts and in our minds. Amen. And the song is, When God is a Child, we will stand and we're going to sing all the verses so we have the candles stand.
have a choir. It's right here. This <laughs> sounded wonderful. And our call to worship. It's from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, and the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Pray for peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. And then come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us stand and feel free. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weakness, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and neighbor. Together. Holy God, remind us that you have formed us with your own hands. You made our 
see in our own image, and makes us in this world to be stewards of your good creation. Made for generous relationships, we are contributed into ourselves, created for the purpose of making your goodness known. We allow lesser tasks to occupy our time. Forgive our failure to live in the way you made us to live. Renew within us the knowledge of your love, so that we may live joyfully and gratefully, sharing what we have. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who offered himself for us and opens to us the way of eternal life. Our assurance forgiveness. With the coming of Christ, God has given us the gift of forgiveness, even 70 times 7. God reaches out to offer us new life, a new day, a chance to begin again, loved and beautiful, even as on the first day of creation. Believe in the promise of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And for our prayer of illumination. Dear Lord, in the silence of our hearts, the listening of our bodies, and the wisdom of our minds, may the word become word for us. In Christ's name, and our life is Amen. And I invite Chris to come forward for the readings. Good morning. First reading comes from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Asmus, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against a nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Now we're going to sing everybody's favorite song, Lord of the Dance.
please sit through the gospel. Our gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. And so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night, night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we are. It is Advent, a season of waiting, but it's a season of rushing. And for all you young mothers out there, if anyone were to tell you to pause and to pray more during this season, you're going to say, are you crazy with everything I have to do? Working full-time, full-time mom, doing everything. And sometimes the pastor will say, this is the time for peace and more time for you and God. But we know. We know that in every household, there are chores to be done during this season. And it started Thursday when so many of you spent maybe as many as 12 hours preparing a turkey dinner and all the works and everything that went with it, you spent all of that time doing it for your family and friends to sit down for maybe 12 to 15 minutes to hurry up and eat because for one thing, you either ate at the halftime of the football game or you waited till the football game was over because that's what we do in the Detroit area. We either wait for halftime or we wait till the end of the game, but then it leaves all the work for whoever to do the cleanup. So there is a lot of stress starting from right before Thanksgiving, right until Christmas Day, for especially the moms in the family. Dads might do the outside lights, but moms are expected to do the cooking, the baking, the cleaning, the tree on the inside, the decorations that are on the inside, the baking of the cookies. And besides that, they're expected to either make up their own card or have a card made that's going to be particular to their family so that they can send it out to all the people that they don't see the rest of the year. And the readings seem to say, oh, you just have to get ready. Wow. And we know what kind of stress it is. I think the whole story for today in this particular reading, because it's one of those eschatological end time kind of readings, basically say, I hope I can live my entire life in such a way that when I am at the end of my life, there won't be regrets, there won't be relationships that have ended, there won't be times when I have severe regret for things I could have, should have, didn't do. But being ready means being awake. If that is one thing we could do 
besides all that other stuff that we get stuck doing during this season of Advent, if we could just be awake to every moment in our life, to pay attention where maybe God is showing up at your door and you're not realizing it. Because so many times God shows up in somebody else. You know, we have a vision of what God must be like. And we forget that God is like everybody. We are all made in the image and likeness of God, as the reading said. And if we could but look at every neighbor as a person who is in the image and likeness of God, that will be enough of our preparation for Christmas. So we know that in life, there are people who are fashionably late, the ones who just make it a point to, if someone says dinner is at 7 o'clock, they're going to be there, of course, no sooner than quarter after, maybe 20 after, and in some areas, like with a couple who had just moved to a city, they were invited to a special Christmas dinner, and then it said 7 o'clock. So they came from an area where 7 o'clock meant 7 o'clock. So they got there at 7 o'clock. They pulled up in front of the house, and it was like, hmm. And the husband looked at his wife, the new attorney, and he said, there are other people coming to this dinner, aren't there? And so they sat there for 15 more minutes. And finally, somebody else came. And then by 7.30, everybody was there. So in some circles of friendships, it's expected that you're going to be late. Okay, is God late ever in our life? Or do we just not notice when God is there? How many people do you know that give you an invitation and say, oh, 7 o'clock, and you know, you know in your heart that they mean Anytime between 7 and 7.30, hopefully closer to 7.30 to get the last minute things done. And we know people too. I remember years ago there was a pastor who, church was at 11 o'clock. Church didn't start until the pastor got there. So church would start told her after, 20 after. It just meant somewhere after 11 o'clock. And people got used to that. When the next pastor came, who happened to be one of those who's always on time, People were getting there at 20 after, and everything had already started. They were midway through the worship by the time they got there because of somebody being used to always being late. But there are times when we are late and it's not our fault. There could be a traffic jam. There could be a train. You know what it's like when you get caught by the train down here. Any number of things like that can happen that make you late. And we don't plan it. But sometimes it just happens. And if it happens at your doctor's office, they usually pass you over. They sometimes don't try to squeeze you in when you're late. But lateness is just part of the human condition. Sometimes we just can't help being late. So here we are on this first Sunday of this season of expectation. And it seems like God is tardy in making good on God's promises. Apart from what we have made the season to be, Advent is kind of about the lateness of God. God has not come in all of God's fullness. The kingdoms of this world have not become the kingdom of of our Lord and of Christ yet. Advent is saying to us that every text we will hear from Scripture during this time, that God is just fashionably late. And yet, we who worship God long for God to come among us, and it has always been so. Paul, writing to the first century uh, Christians, 
ends his letter voicing the longing of that Christmas for Christians in that day. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. If you go to the last book of the New Testament, the Christian scriptures, the book of Revelation, and find there that it says, Lord, come quickly. Why? Because deep within all of us is a longing for the one who is fashionably late. Advent is about the lateness of God. In both the readings from Isaiah and Matthew's Gospel, we have heard this haunting reality. Isaiah imagines days to come when God will draw to Jerusalem's holy mountain all people. Jesus, near the end of his life, looks into the eyes of the anxious disciples and speaks not of God's coming in victory, but of Jerusalem's destruction. Therefore, he said, you must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. We are to be ready, even when God is fashionably late. And so we ask, what in the world is God saying to us? For some, it suggests that God is absent from the world God created. You know, one of the mantras that was around in the 60s was, some of you remember, it was even on the cover of Time magazine, God is dead. I don't like that one. But what some were trying to say is that God, as conceived by classic theology, is, at best, absent. Checked out? or disengaged from our lives. For some of us, the lateness of God means God's absence or God's distance. And for others, it means a silence. They don't hear God speaking to them. And for even those of us who are not sure how to understand how to hear the Bible at all times, and that goes for all of us. Because for as many years as I've studied the Bible, the Hebrew Scriptures, and the Christian Scriptures, there are times when all of a sudden something stands out and I go, I never noticed that before. Where did it come from? It's almost like, did someone stick that in there? And when you read it out of the different translations, which I always recommend that you try to compare different translations of the Bible, because sometimes you're going to see something a little bit different in King James Version, Revised Standard Version, or if you're going to read the Message Bible, or the New English Bible. With that particular translation, what well, happens to be one that my husband likes that I don't like. Uh, but the different translations will read a little bit differently to each of you. So several years ago, Edwin Dobbs wrote an essay for Harper's in which he gave the title, Kiss is still a kiss. Dodds not only wrote about the history of the kiss, the giving and the receiving of the kiss, but how a kiss given and received between lovers, family, and friends is the most natural thing to do. Truth to tell, the longer the absence, the deeper is this longing for a blessed reunion. Who are the people you need to be reunited with? Is it family? Somebody just being stubborn, refusing to talk to somebody else? Maybe that's where our efforts should be placed in these four weeks of Advent. Reaching out, touching somebody you haven't seen for a long time, 
dropping a note to maybe the people that are on our weekly prayer list that you haven't seen for a while, ringing the phone, maybe just those intentional things that show you are really awake to your circumstances. If we could only be awake and aware, nothing extra, just be awake and aware during this season of Advent, then when Christmas Day comes, it will be joyful and it will be the kind of joy that comes from within, not just a ha-ha kind of silliness when we gather and tell jokes, but a real uniting of friendships and family, touching hearts, as you spend some time on being awake and aware. So yes, it is also a time to maybe deepen a little bit of our devotion to God at this time, if we can. If nothing else, when you're stuck at a red light or when the train's going by, hey, say a prayer. Uh, say a prayer for any of the people you haven't seen for a while or any of the people that you know in your heart you find them difficult to love. St. Augustine said, Too late have I loved thee, O beauty so ancient and young. Too late have I loved thee. Too late have I loved thee. So that is the good news of Advent, to learn to be awake and aware. Recognize that some people will always be late as far as the clock. That's okay, as long as they get there. And if we could remember that when our end time comes, as the readings are speaking to us this week, that apocalyptic part of the Gospel of Matthew, Think about the three kings. You know, there was a musical work, it's an oratorial that was written years ago, and it had a familiar storyline. It was what the three were saying, what the wise men who followed the star, which directed them to the place of Jesus' birth, First one said, made this journey to discover how to be truthful. That's why I followed the star. The second one says, to discover how to be living now is the reason I followed the star. And the third one, said, to discover how to be loving now is the reason I followed the star. And in that musical work, the climax occurs when the three strong male voices all sing together. To discover how to be human now is the reason we followed the star. And the people said, Amen. This time I just want you to quietly think of what you believe in. An affirmation of faith could be so, so simple. I believe Jesus is Lord. Now for our prayers. And we lift up, first of all, Brady, who has RSV. It's being controlled at this time. 
and I want to lift up the families that are having visitation at funeral homes today. It'd be the foster family and the Shravi family. And we do have prayers that have been answered. One of our members who we're praying for is cancer free now. So prayers will be good. Gracious God, because we are not strong enough to pray as we should, you provide Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to intercede for us in power. In this confidence, we ask you to accept our prayers. We offer our gratitude for all your blessings and gifts as we paused to celebrate Thanksgiving and our Advent, may we share of our bounty with those neighbors who have little. And we pray today for your creation. You entrusted the earth to the human race, yet we disrupt its wholeness with violence and corrupt its purity with our greed. Prevent us from destroying what you have made and called good so that our children's children may inherit lands and seas brimming with life and beauty. We pray today for the people of the world. Preserve the people of every nation from tyrants. Heal them of disease. Protect them in disaster and war and famine. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine, for the people of Russia too. And for the people of Iran and Syria, help all the women, men, and children to walk in the ways that lead to peace. We pray today for our city of Richmond, Michigan. Heal the rifts and fear caused by violence, bullying in our schools, maybe. Take away the violence and death brought by guns. We saw what happened this week. How many times did you turn on the news? Tragedy after tragedy. Turn our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Protect all of our city's children and give them lives of safety, hope, and joy. We pray today for our country, especially after a recent election. Give wisdom to those who govern us, to our president and our Congress, our state government, and our courts. Keep safe those who protect us from danger. Inform us as a nation where justice flows like life-giving water. We pray today for this local church. Strengthen its leaders, the elders, all of the membership online, person. Sustain them and give them the energy of your Holy Spirit so they may give others new life and hope. Be close to those in our community who are sick in body, heart, and mind. We pray for any of our newly baptized, 
that they may grow in a community of faith. As we mark another season of Advent, remembering the one who came as our Savior, let us remember too the kingdom he came to bring. The kingdom that we, as his disciples, called to be partners in bringing. Eternal God, your love is stronger than death. We rejoice in the lives of those in our community, many who have died in faith. Keep us in joyful communion with them until we join the saints of every nation gathered before your throne in ceaseless praise. We pray these things through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. In the mystery of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the triune God, in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, For thanksgiving for all of those offerings. We have offered our individual gifts, our time, our talent, and our financial resources to God for the mission of the church. And those gifts become the church's gifts. And then the church offers them to the world. So with generous hearts, let us continue offer and to be thankful that we can gift the local church to be all that it is meant to be. In our prayer of dedication, just as Elijah took up Elijah's mantle and the disciples took up the ministry of Jesus, their teacher, we present our gifts through them And as you begin this journey of Advent, remember that you are partners with Christ in bringing out the realm of God and that in the days of uncertainty, as the world is transformed, watchful, stay awake. Remembering that Christ prays for you and draws you into the very heart of God. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. Please stand for now bless the God of Israel.
blessings on this Advent season as you are awake and aware to everything around you. Amen. Go in peace. Service has ended. Our service begins with the hanging of the greens.